M-X Cloud. And if you go to your favorites, they have songs at the club when I was on drugs 33 years ago. Wow. Oh, nice. New Year's Eve, 1988. <laughs> the music from then. Wow. Is that, uh, what year did you get sober? 89. 89. Wow. So that was my last year of getting high. They have that on an app. Could you imagine? No. And I had to have been there that, that year because I would go even when I was sober. 1988, I was just getting started. <laughs> I was. Really? I was, yeah, it was the first time I did a line of crystal meth was in 1988. Wow. Yeah. And I loved it. Yeah. Well, I was like, you know, I was this chubby kid. Like, you know, I did. I did and I smoked pot prior to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but pot was like not good for me because it gave me the munchies. Mm. Oh yeah, and I'd be all I'd be all up in the pantry with you know. My, and back then, my mom had you know hot pockets, right? <laughs> like all whatever. the bad stuff back then. Yeah, those little yeah. pizzas. Yeah. Ma- Mama Celeste. Yeah, the and Mama Celeste pizzas. You're eating hello, then it's like even worse, yeah. right? And oh, gaining yeah. weight. Oh, oh my yeah. god, I was gaining weight like a madman, and then and then I did a line of crystal meth, and I was like. Man, this, this is shit's just got my hungry. I could do my homework, you know. <laughs> yeah, was Adderall around back then? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I don't. It no, wasn't pushed like it they was They had now. this stuff called Fen Fen. Um, they they would prescribe it to ladies. Uh, it was called Fen Fen, and it was like a it was like a it was a speed. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's called Black Beauties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was young. That's funny. <laughs> or uh, yellow jackets. Yellow yeah. jackets, yeah. Michael Angelo, are we live? We're live. We're right. rolling. Yeah, we've been rolling yeah, for we've a been, while. Yeah, we've been hot here. It's kind of how we we do it every yeah. time. Just get right into it. Perfect. Just have like conversation in yeah. the beginning. Yeah, it's peaceful. Yeah. Today on our show, we have <laughs> Ken Seeley. Yes, we do. Yes, Mr. Ken Seeley. A and E intervention, right? Uh, intervention world famous. Nine, well, yeah, you're world. Yeah, you're world out, famous. You're world really. Famous. Because A and E is in uh, it's in many a countries, lot of countries, a lot yeah. of countries. Yeah, shocking. Yeah, yeah. It, the intervention show was like, how, how many countries? It was huge, a huge. Lot. Or is it still the same in I, as many countries? Yeah, right I think now? it's still going in yeah. a lot of countries. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I don't even know which one it is, but I know um, when Candy went down to Mexico, they said that they had to have bodyguards with her because really? um, they don't want people getting their loved or their people off drugs. Uh, <laughs> so wow. when she went down there, they were like, Oh yeah, you, but you, you need some security. Wow. So, yeah, that's cool that you can uh, rise to the top like that. You know, sober 1989. How yep. old were you? 26. 26. So I what, just turned 60. What drove you to like, what was the final 10 days? Like uh, it's a guy that I just helped get sober. He just went to treatment. Yeah. He, um, I was at his apartment in Laguna Beach. Could you imagine? July 4th. And we were all getting high. Yeah. And then July 14th, I got fired from my job. 10 days later. 10 days later. So you went, did you go on a 10 day run? Or were you just like, were you using every day back then? Oh yeah, every day I used, yeah. Yeah. Then, and that was right after, you know, the 4th of July. That's a big holiday. Yeah, so you're like holiday. really getting yeah. loaded. You're like, <laughs> it's you're going overboard. Yeah. yeah. And I remember we we're all sitting in his apartment and I was like, felt really sick. And I was like, oh my God, I think I did too much. Oh shit. And so I just stayed home or stayed at their house when I they all went to the beach to yeah. watch the fireworks. Wow. I was like, yeah, I'm not going out. So yeah. I was really sick. Physically, I could feel it. Drinking or? Meth. Meth. Yeah. Yeah. Just thinking you're going to die, heart's pounding. Yeah. Yeah, I hate that. I just... I hate that. Your organs, you just feel like something's not right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know when your body's not... Yeah. ...is rejecting all the chemicals. Yeah. yeah. I do. I do. You smoked crack, right? Yeah, I smoked crack. You know, to the point where I, I, I got, like, eated. Yeah. You know, and I couldn't leave. I had to jump into this cold shower. I thought I was going to die. I would drive myself to the emergency room, sit there for a half hour, 45 minutes until I came down. In the emergency room? At the emergency, yeah. What the hell is that all about? I was like, I I didn't want to be around anybody uh, that could uh, arrest me. Bro, I thought I was going to (laughs) die. I drove to the hospital. I sat in the emergency room parking lot until I felt better. And then I drove back home. I did that at least twice a week. Oh, my God. Yeah. So how? what would you do? Go in there if you felt it was going to get I never ended up going in. Wow. I never once went in. But they'd look out the window. I drove a Hummer. Like, they kind of knew me. Yeah. Uh, There wasn't very many Hummers. I think there were two or three... You know, it's was not it a, a regular Hummer, a Hummer one or no, a Hummer H2, 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 H2. Yeah. Yeah. 
And what year was that when they were really popular? Yeah, it was 25. And you were up in Winnipeg? Yeah, 26, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know he's Canadian? No. Well, yeah. he's, he, yeah, he did. American now. American now. Yeah. He called me they, they, um, the day he took his citizenship <laughs> test. Well, he yeah. failed it. Oh, failed I it. failed the first one. That's yeah. the usual. I mean, I failed everything he's the like, first time. They said, uh, what's the first three words of the United States Constitution? Yeah. Do you got? Do you know it, Ken? No. We the people. Yeah. I, I, t- I had to Google it when she <laughs> called me. He's like, I'm here to phone a friend. <laughs> Yeah. He told the guy, "Can I phone a friend?" I did. Oh my I god! Did. Then the next time I it went, it wasn't in, a game. No, <laughs> that no. Game, he can said, I "Sorry, do I get a chance?" Come back in two weeks. <laughs> um, next time I went in, though, I saw the same security guard, and I said, "Bro, I'm nervous." And he said, "Yeah, I remember you. You failed." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, what?" Everyone knows. He goes, "Well, normally people don't fail. They don't speak English either." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm like, what should I expect today?" He said, "Just study the first seven questions." <laughs> I swear to God. So I'm in the corner studying the first seven questions. Sure enough, that's what the test was that day, the first seven questions. Really? And I think I got a four and a half out of seven. Just barely made it. Wow. Yeah. Just ba- You're just barely in barely a, a U.S. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. But great childhood, great parents, great life. Uh, yeah. Yeah, incredible. I've known both of you about the same amount of, of time. I've, I've known Ken a little bit longer. Yeah. Long I mean, you, I was th- you know, uh, I was thinking about one of the inter- uh, interventions that you did um, that came to hope that was on the show, and um, it, you uh, chased him through Florida and um, oh, did the Baker Act on that? him. Yeah. Oh my Do you God. remember that? Brett. Yeah. I wow. remember Brett. Yeah. yeah. It was like one of my favorite stories. Yeah. It's a, it's a sad story. Oh, Super it's a sad story. Heartbreaking story. story like, right? oh. Ken chased him for, uh, I mean, Miles, miles, miles in a hundred degree humidity wow. in Florida. Yeah. And we were jumping in vans, out of vans, you know, and okay, now this one will go help yeah. talk, try to talk them yeah, in. Of course, throw different and people at them. I would, I would try to do it. And yeah. then the next person would try to do it. We just kept, and then I was like, we got to just get to his house before he does. Cause we knew he had guns in his house. Wow. Yeah. And we were like, he may just off himself cause wow. he's so stubborn right now. Yeah. Right. And I was like, he may just kill himself when he gets there. So that was my biggest fear. Um, so I was like, we got to get there. And so his little kid, his son, um, I think it was his son that climbed through the window when he got, when we got to the van or to took the van to, to the his house. house and his son climbed in the window and we got into his apartment and, um, Got rid of all the guns. Yeah. We were like, I'm, we're not taking that chance. Because wow. he was so stubborn. Yeah. I remember in the show, I only, I, I, I just remember watching it. And at, at one point, uh, it was like, it was no, absolutely not no. And then all of a sudden they went, they're going to do the Baker Act, the Florida <laughs> Baker Act, right? Yeah. And uh, next explain to he, explain to the people what that is. Well, Ken will have to okay. because he knows it more. Yeah. Than oh, I yeah, that was that that was the only thing that got him. He called a college friend. And his friend came that wasn't at the intervention and he came over and he goes, these people are trying to make me do something. I'm not doing this yeah. shit. This is bullshit. Yeah. You know? And then he was like, get him out of my house when he finally got to his apartment. And so, um, I had to stand on the outside of the door mm-hmm. and every, like he wouldn't call the police on the, his family. So they got to be in the house and I stood on the outside and just guided them. And so his friend came out and he said, he's not going. And I was like, well, maybe you should let him know about the Baker Act and the Marchman Act. And yeah. he's like, what's that mean? And I was like, all it takes is two family members and a therapist to say he needs treatment and yeah. they're going to mandate treatment 100%, for him. Yeah. And he was like, I'm not going. And I was like, here, look it up. Look it up yourself and go explain to him what it means. But he's not going to be doing it at a nice place like in right. California at Hope. Mm, right. He's not doing he's it there. He's stuck in Florida somewhere. He's going to be in a place wherever the judge decides yeah. to send him to yeah. or whatever he could afford. Because yeah. you got to be able to either yeah. afford a nice one, have insurance for a nice one, or the judge just sends you to one. Yeah. And I said, he could do it wherever he wants. I don't care if he does it in Florida or he does it here, but he's going to treatment yeah. today. Yeah. <laughs> he was pissed. Jesus. Holy shit. Yeah. 
And the Baker Act there. isn't, um, that's not in every state. In California, we no. can't do that. Florida is like the only one. The only one. Yeah. The only one. Yeah. I think Mississippi has it. I think there's one or two other s- states, yeah, but I'm Kentucky. not sure. Yeah, there's one other state. But, but yeah, Florida's big. But you it. have to be a resident of that yeah, state. Yeah. You need to have an ID. Yes. And in Florida, you could just be in Florida. Wow. So it doesn't matter. Wow. That's what I love about Florida. Yeah. Just every drive st- people in there then. Just be like, hey. Let's go on a trip to Florida. You're right. <laughs> We're not supposed to tell that secret. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a family vacation in Florida. Yeah, family vacation. We're all vacation going to Disneyland. Yeah, Disney World. Yeah. There you Do go, imagine Disney World. Two days at yeah. Disney World, and then you're in uh, handcuffs? As soon as they land, here's right. some papers we'd like you to read. Wow. Needless to say, the guy um, came to treatment and um, was doing absolutely amazing. Mm. Turned Incredible. his life around. Was like ready to do the deal. Yeah. Um, he called oh, me, I don't, yeah, and he said, "Ken, I don't want to go home." He goes, "I'm afraid with all the triggers, I want to stay in California." Mm-hmm. You know, I did so well at Hope, I want to stay in yeah. California. And I said, "Well, let's work with them, and we'll find you a place to go." Yeah. You know, when you're done with treatment. And so he, I mean, from going from there, I was completely shocked that he was like, "I don't want to go home." Yeah, right. It's yeah. amazing. And then Model that bad. Client. Everything. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden he like couldn't eat yeah. for like two weeks. Like couldn't eat. And uh, we ended up taking him to the emergency room and um, he was diagnosed with cancer. Jesus. Literally died within like three to six weeks. I can't remember. It was fast. He went home to be with his kids. Yep. Wow. And his son got to, um, he got to go to his son's baseball game. And um, his son goes, at least my dad quit. You know, like we met enough to him that he quit. Yeah. And he goes, and he got to see me come to my last er, a game yeah. before he passed. Wow. Yeah. Good for the good for him. What's to his me, name? Brett. 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 Yeah. No, it's, you know, I'm I'm biased, right? Uh, because the, it, it, I was involved in yeah. the show, but um, best episode. The best. Most. I mean, most heart wrenching. You know, his son, his son did say, and it says, his son says at the very end, he's like. At least my dad died sober. Right. Yeah. Was like, you know. And he's dead. So he's going to take Powerful. going to take that forever. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. Like he possibly broke the cycle. Yeah. Right. It's a good possibility. Totally. That, wouldn't it be awesome to look that kid up? I know, this, right? He's, a, he's an adult by now. Yep. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I did a few years ago, and he's all grown up and and um, doing well. And yeah. It's so heartbreaking to yeah. And that kid, I just it just ripped your heart out with those, you know, you yeah. had two kids. But yeah, but look what you did. You gave the family that peace. Right? Like he died, a tragedy, but yeah. you gave him that peace. Yep. And you, you never were, gave up. Yeah. Yeah. You just kept fighting and fighting and yeah. fighting that day. I mean, we sit around waiting for the for the call that the the guy said when, when you're when you're the treatment center involved mm-hmm. in the show, you're just, you're just sitting around waiting. You yeah. know the interventions happening happening that day. You don't know how long it's going to last. It could be one hour. It could be a day, two days, <laughs> two yeah. days, yeah. 24 hours. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you never it. know. Yeah. Yeah. Are they That's coming amazing. or are they not coming? Yeah. I mean, you, they always come though. Uh, sometimes they don't. They don't. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Sometimes. And, that happens. Huh. Yeah. There's a few that don't go. I don't, know not, 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 I don't know not, if not any like, of not, mine. Not, not, not <laughs> I don't know if any of mine. That's what I was it. saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I have seen few episodes yeah. that they don't go. <laughs> really, yeah. I just feel you plant a seed. Um, they're going to die miserable. Yeah. That's all. You know, they can't see how they're similar to us other uh, other people. Yeah. The similarities. Yeah. Too difficult to see. Yeah. You know? How do you, how do you, uh, before I get to the show, how did you get involved in doing interventions? I was answering phones at a treatment center. And when I was answering them, people were like, how do I do an intervention? How do I get my loved one help? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Whoa. I was like, I could talk them into it. And it was kind of, I thought it was more like a 12 step call. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. you know, I was like, well, I just love recovery. Like Eric said earlier, right. I'm, I'm AA squared, yeah. you know, I was in recovery for 10 years. Yeah. When before I started doing interventions and I was like, I could talk people into coming because yeah. I just loved the difference in my life. And so I'll never forget the one was down here in Orange County. And I was, uh, I, I, it was, I can't remember what nationality it was, but the parents didn't speak English. 
And, um, and so I go there and they're like freaking out. How do we get them in? And the son is living in their house and selling meth out of their house. Oh, that's that's <laughs> a easy, that's a that's easy a good one. Time. Okay. Right. <laughs> but he's in his bedroom and they were like, we don't know if he has a gun. I was like, what do you mean you don't oh, know if geez. he has a gun? So I'm knocking on his door in the bedroom. And then I called them from the, the living room and yeah. I was like, you know, Hey, I, you know, I just want to talk to you. Just give me a few minutes yeah. and, um, get the fuck out of my, <laughs> he's screaming at me, right. slams the phone down. And then when I'm knocking on his door, I'm like, is he going to shoot me? Yeah. And so finally he runs out his window, out the backyard, into the garage where his car was parked. And he, um, the garage door opener broke. So he's hitting it like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and it's flying all over the car. And I'm just sitting on a box on, you know, and he has a window up in his car. And I was like, calm down, calm down. Everything's going to be, I'm not here to hurt you. I want to, I just want to talk to you. Yeah. And he's like, get the hell out of here. And then he puts the car in reverse and goes through the closed Ooh. door. So now the door is wow. on top of his BMW convertible. Oh no. It fell off the track and on the car. Oh wow. And so... I had two guys that were in treatment and I was like, Oh, you guys want to come with me to help this guy get it, come to treatment. <laughs> and so they came and they were outside calling the police. I was like, yeah, call the police. And so they called the police and then there's helicopters riding around oh. their house as this BMW is flying down the street. <laughs> it's like, Oh my God. Garage door still on top. <laughs> so let's stop in the car. I was like on the convertible. Yeah. Soft top. Yeah. So I was like, Oh my God. I was like, I think I better get some training. That was, that was intervention. Number one. <laughs> I think I better get some training. Where'd you go? Um, I did some courses in orange County at Irvine at the university. They had, yeah, because I was going to say there's not, there wasn't much available no. back then. This is like what what year? Uh, uh, 99, 90, 2000. 2000. Yeah. So there, it, it, like was intervention, nothing. people didn't even really talk about no. it then. No, no, no. Was was uh, like John Southworth around at that time? Uh, Randy McGraw was doing them trainings, and I did that one with Phil. I flew out to Chicago and did a training with them. Um, Ed Storty, I knew him. I got to know him. Then yeah, Ed Storty. John Southworth. Yeah. So I started getting to know people in the industry. Right. And then they, we came up with this board-registered interventionist. So we started doing that. Nice. Um, so I got registered as an interventionist. But, I, you know, I just had a trial and error. Yeah. And I was doing a lot. I was doing like three or four a week. Nice. That's exciting so, stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. Nerve wracking, but then so so from there, you went to uh, the intervention show. Yep. How did that? How did that come about into your life? Well, you know Donna, right? I know Donna. Yeah. yeah. So uh, she was, you know, I was opening up my sober living in LA, and she was like, "I want to learn how to do interventions." And at that time, you know, I was what 10, 11 years sober, and. A lot of people in recovery started thinking, oh, I could do an intervention. Yeah. I could do an intervention. And I was like, oh, God, here comes another one that wants to learn how to do interventions. And she, I was like, well, I'm moving furniture um, into my um, new sober living if you show up and help me. So <laughs> she shows up with this big SUV. Oh, God. <laughs> gigantic SUV, uh, the extra long one. Yeah. And she's like, I'm here to help. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, who is this woman? <laughs> Did you think that, that that was uh, when you said, uh, help me move? She ain't going to come. She ain't going to come. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's like, get out of here. Yeah. Good luck. That's awesome. And so we became best friends after that. Like she helped me with this sober living, you know, running it. And we just, you know, we're like, together all the time and then so she started doing interventions and then um she was an agent before she got sober yeah and so when she was she knew a lot of people in the industry so we would go to all these agents and uh you know trying to get a pitch a show yeah and they're like they're never going to pick up a show it's too dark you know nobody's going to yeah. pay for advertising with drug addicts right they're just not going to do it and um so we kind of gave up, you know, we had a whole treatment plan, we gave up. And this is what we're, I was talking to you about earlier is you never give up on your dreams totally right? because it didn't happen in the way I expected it to happen, but it still happened. Yeah. And then a year later, somebody, uh, it came out on the news that a show called Intervention was coming out. I was like, what the fuck? I thought they said, 
It's not going to be a show. They said no a year ago. <laughs> right? What the hell is yeah. this all yeah. about? Yeah. And so, um, so then uh, I had this woman working with us at the time, and she was like, oh, I could get the producer's phone number. And I was like, what do you mean you could get a producer's phone number? I don't even know what that even means. I didn't know what producers were. I didn't know any of that yeah. stuff. And so she got the creator, Sam's phone number. And I said, hey, Sam, I said, this, my name's Ken Seeley. I'm an interventionist. You should really interview me, you know, for the TV show. I said, I'm really good at what I do. And he goes, we already got the mail. We're looking for a female. And I was like, I'm telling you, you should really interview me. So I called him like five times. Nice. And I said, I'm really good at what I do. I think you should really, and he goes, listen, we already got the mail. We're looking for a female. And I was thinking to myself, well, I'll put on fucking dress and makeup. Right, right? so okay. would I. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> like, if you really want a female. Right. <laughs> try I drag, can, even I, though I never did it. Uh, no, I'm in. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go. <laughs> I'll try it. I say no to end nothing. I <laughs> say yes to everything. Yes. <laughs> yes I didn't yes. want to push him away that far. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was that crazy. <laughs> and so he goes, uh, after like being harassed, he yeah. goes, okay, Ken, if I get picked up for uh, season two, I'll call you back. Because we found our female. Okay. So that was Jeff and Candy. And they did a season and they said, absolutely. You know, we got picked up and he called me up and I was in, I still remember this. I mean, this was in 2005, I yeah. think. I think the first season came out in 2005. So I filmed 2005 and then 2006 I came on. But um, in 2005, you know, I'm in Philly you know, doing in nonstop interventions. Yeah. You know, have an interventionist all over the country by then. And, um, and I said, uh, and he, I get a call and, Hey, Ken, are you still looking for that job? I was like, what the fuck is this? What do you mean a job? I don't need a job. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I have five interventionists working with me. I don't need, a, that's what my head was telling. I was like, yeah, yeah sure. What, kind of, what are you talking about? Yeah. You know, just trying to of course. be nice to whoever's saying I, that I need a job. And he goes, it's Sam from the show. I was like, oh, thank God. I didn't say hang up on him and say, <laughs> I don't need a job. <laughs> and so I said, oh, Sam, yeah. So he interviewed me. And I thought he was only interviewing me because yeah. I was her, one harassing. And I think he interviewed like 20 to 40 people. Yeah. And they picked me. Wow. And so it's been ever since then, I've been part of it. Yeah. That's I think that show. we did the very last episode of season two. Yeah. Um, Jill, it was the first one. I don't remember for it was. It, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was season two, the yeah. very last episode. Yep. Um, either that or it was she aired the very first episode of season three. I can't remember. But yeah, I still t I still talk to her. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh my. She lives around God. here. God. She lives here. Holy cow. She has a yoga studio. Wow. Oh my God. She's married. She has a little girl that wow. looks just like That's her. That's cool. Good for you. Yeah. Like, and, and so many people, you know, I get this all the time. Like, you get the critics out there, like yeah. the mean people uh, like that don't yeah. believe in the yeah, show. Of course. Oh, you are... Um, exploiting. Exploiting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that one. Exploiting. Yeah. I was like, they have nothing in their lives. They can't afford 90 days of treatment. Anywhere. We're giving them an opportunity. Yeah. And the families all sign off on it. They're, we're just showing... You know, I wish when they did my intervention and fired me... I wish I had that on camera. Yeah. I wish I could have seen. I was 130 pounds. I wish I could remember Damn, that. 130. Wow. And I'm 215. You're, you're right six now. foot. You're at least six foot. Yes. Yeah. Six one. 130. I was 130 when I got sober. And I'm five foot seven. Yeah. And I, I was skinny. Yes. So like you know. Sucked up. <laughs> wow. So I was really sucked Not up. Not pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Not pretty. Just a skeleton. My arms were about this big around. Yes, me too. Up here, yeah, this part was about like that big around. Size Jeez. of your finger. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> and I thought I was badass. Right. I, th I thought I looked good. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, the oh, meth mirror. My the God. meth mirror. The meth mirror. <laughs> I never look in the mirror. I nope. just like, yeah. <laughs> the meth yeah. mirror. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, so I can't believe she's here. But now, you know, it's it's amazing. Like, how many people's lives have changed because of that show? Right. How many people? Like, I was just in Palm Springs, and this guy came up to me, and he's like, I watched every episode, You, uh, what you guys are doing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. You're saving. You know, all over the world that happens. Like, people come up and thank me. 
because their lives have changed some way from watching it. Right. Of course. So there's, how, there's, there's always haters, though. There's always. It's, it, people hate it, hate to see other people successful. Right. Yes. You know, and, and, and it's like, it, they're, and on the internet, they're actually called trolls. <laughs> <laughs> trolls. That's what they call them. Name. Like, that's what, like, like, um, ver- he's right, over right? there shaking his head. Is, yes. is that correct, he's Michelangelo? Like, yeah. <laughs> Michelangelo saying, yep, yeah. trolls. <laughs> It's it's good when you have trolls yeah. trolling. Yeah. That means you're doing something. Doing something that means you're making yeah. that yeah. means means you're making moves and you're making yeah. noise. Yeah. You know? I and, like I know you. So yeah. I know you personally. I know a long time. Yeah, I long time. Yeah. So cuz you probably I did Jill's intervention. It was either you or Candy cuz there was only 3 of you yeah. back then. Possibly could have been Jeff. Too bad Eminem didn't put you in the song though. I know. You right? just didn't have a hard last name to rhyme. <laughs> Silly well, wheelie, you got, yeah, it's easy. It's, it's easy. Yeah. If I can rhyme it, it's really yeah. easy. Yeah. But that'd be cool. Uh, that was pretty neat though. Yeah. Did you ever talk to Jeff about that? Did you ever mention that? I, uh, back in the day. Yeah. In, it was a long time. Eminem. I mean, that was one of his top songs. What song yeah. was it? Um, Mo- Monster. Oh, the monster. <laughs> You're not that <laughs> one. I'm not that one. Don't yeah. look at me. <laughs> he, he doesn't even know who Jeff Van Bonderen is, but, uh, um. Yeah, it's in, in, in Eminem r- r- rhymed with Van Vonderen and Van intervention. I need an inter- intervention. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Yeah, that's nice. And then they did another. Uh, what was that? That um, that was the cartoon, the Kenny cartoon. What was that? That those little things. What are they called? Um, South Park. South Park. Yeah. Oh yeah. They did a vid, uh, thing about him. What he used to say: "We got a lot, bunch of people that love you to death." You know, because <laughs> yeah. oh, he had really? the same script. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, the what, <laughs> when they would first sit down. It was a uh, um, they're going to read what they're going to read. Yes. <laughs> I can't remember how it went, but, but it, 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 he had the same script. Yeah, <clears throat> they put that in South Park. They did. That's that. hilarious. It was so funny. It's good stuff. So people people come up to you and they're like, "Hey, Ken." How, yeah. how often does that happen? Well, like I said, I was in Manhattan's restaurant in Palm Springs yeah. just last week. And this guy came up and I was like, because I lived in Palm Springs a long yeah. time. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's somebody that I met and I just don't know who it is. So I just said, hey, how are you? Good to see you. And he's like, nice to meet you. I was like, oh, nice to meet me. <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I've been watching the show for yeah. years and I've seen every episode. So that's, you know, how you know, like, the show was huge, huge, huge. right? Huge. For a long time. Yeah. Huge. Like, huge. Yeah. We, when we would ha- be on an episode and, like, you know, we would get this much airtime. This yep. much. Yep. Our phones would blow up. Wow. For, like, two, three days straight. Really? Oh, yeah. We would get. Oh, my we, God. We would get, you know, 10, 10 uh, new admissions. Whoa. From, from one show. And sometimes we, w- we would know when a, a show would replay yeah and um all of a sudden uh, it would replay phones are going off the phones hook. are going off and, and, and you know you know my mom penny she used yeah. to answer the phones all the time she'd be like we must have aired <laughs> our <laughs> intervention show That's tonight hilarious. yeah yeah penny. some people over here yeah that was a, a whole different because you know in the beginning it was you remember everything was still a cash pay business yeah. yes when when all of this was going on so people could not when that show started nobody could afford treatment yep. if you didn't and treatment has always been around yep twenty to forty thousand uh, dollars depending on where you go yep um, you know up, per month up, per month per yeah. month. Up, yeah. up to ninety thousand yeah. yep. dollars. Yeah. If you wanted to go to the high end Malibu programs. Yep. Back in the day, when it was cash pay. Yeah. And this was two early two thousands. We're now in twenty twenty three. Yeah, because that, that's when it was easy to refinance your home. Remember, yeah. so people were doing a lot of right? that. Yeah. Refinancing yeah. their homes and getting good interest rates, and mm-hmm. you know, putting their loved ones into treatment and paying cash. Yeah. yeah. That's how it was up until for us. And I've been, um, you know, working in the uh, treatment industry since 2000, uh, 2001. Um, and it, it was somewhere around 2010 when we started um, reimbursing people f- for insurance. We yes. would bill and yep. then we would reimburse them, but it was still cash up front. Yep. And then shortly after that, uh, whatever happened, the, the uh, which, which one? Which act was it? The a parody, the parody act. Yep. Um, 
they then insurance companies had to pay for treatment if you're going to pay for uh you know surgeries multiple surgeries you had to pay for treatment yep um which was good and what year did that happen uh, 11 12 yeah 11 so 10 years 12. ago and I, I think that was no i think one of them happened in the bush era and then the obamacare uh everybody with pushed everybody out, yeah, pushed, yeah. pushed out the, everything uh, yeah yeah it opened it up but it also yeah. you know uh ruined right. ruined our industry uh killed it oh my god yeah. right? because oh, so much so shit much crap going, going on. on oh yeah. my god yeah got rid of the riffraff though we needed a change yeah you know things are good again yeah, yeah. i think yeah, I do. Too. You know, it's not the same. It's a balance uh, now. It's a balance. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 to to still be here, you you have to be doing things the right way. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's people that that aren't, but they won't they won't be around for long. And a lot of people didn't make it. No. A lot of people didn't make it. No. So. Yep. A lot of places closed down. Closed down. Tons. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're still doing the deal. Huge deal. But Huge deal. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people. How many beds you got now? Uh, like two, 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 close to 250. Nice. Holy Almost shit. Almost filled up 100% capacity. Yeah. 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 That's huge, bro. I mean, it's not, it's not the Hopeaholics. It's the Infinity Group. Yeah. Which yeah. Sponsors the Hopeaholics. Saving lives. Like how they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. But Ken, um, you actually brought Middle America, the definition of, of, of an addict, an alcoholic, right into their living room. Mm -hmm. You know, what to look for, signs, symptoms, yep. you know, somewhere to turn. Never had that before. Never. Never. I mean, and, that's, and that there was suffer. a possibility of getting treatment right? even when the Help. person didn't want to go. Yes. Yeah. That's what you gave them. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's what the show opened up that yeah. door, that they really see, like, oh, my God, because... When you talk about addicts and alcoholics, the families are ashamed. They're mm. embarrassed. Yeah. They're like, oh my God, nobody could know about this. Right. So keeping it a secret. Keeping it a secret. And then we all know what that does. And so they they don't tell their neighbors. They don't tell their best friends. They don't tell anybody what they're going through. No. They just live it in this nightmare. And now all of a sudden they watch it on TV and they're like, oh my God, that's going on in our right. house. I found the tinfoil. I just didn't know what it was used for. Yes. I found the bottle cap in the syringe. Jesus. Yes. Now they know. Now they know. And yeah. they know that there's something they could do. Yeah. And even though they do, a lot of families still don't want to do anything because they're afraid to rock the boat. Yeah. That's the heartbreaking yeah, part. That is heartbreaking. Uh, yeah. And they, or they worry um, that if I, if I kick them out or I do this, they're going to die. Yes. Or they're yeah. What if they what yeah. if they die in your living room? Yeah. Or you, or their bedroom. I mean, that happens. I think yeah. more deaths and overdoses are happening where the family either pays for them a place for them to live mm -hmm. or they in their homes. More deaths are happening there than on the streets. Yeah. It's a fine line though. I mean, when I talk to parents and and, and I try to explain the situation, I mean, I try to tell them, you know, if they ask a tough question, I say, what's in your heart? Because yep. in the end, the parent has to go to sleep at night. Yep. If that child or loved one dies, I can't have that parent calling me back and going, bro, you told me to do this. Yep. And you fucked up. So I, uh, my, my last word to any family is do what's in your heart. Yep. I, I don't like that codependency thing so much. Yeah. Because they say, well, it's codependent. And I go, yeah, but... But what is, you know, God forbid the worst thing possible happens, you still have to live with yourself. Yes. And if you don't make a decision with your heart, you're not going to be able to live with yourself. Yeah. But that's admissions, right? That's that's where that's where you define that you're answering the phone calls. Uh but then you have the difference between what Ken does, yeah. which is an intervention yeah. where he's there with the whole entire family yeah. and the addict. And they're gonna set some boundaries, and um, you know, create that, that bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. which you right. can explain more because I kind of want, I want to explain uh, how you do the process and and how you get addicts into treatment because you have a very high success rate. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it's you know going to twelve step meetings for all those years prior to getting involved and in doing interventions. You always hear the speakers talk about what it was like 
what happened and what it's like today, mm. right? That's the format of a speaker meeting. Right. And when you hear that, you say, what happened? What is it that happened in their life that they say, I want to change? And it's always, always something regarding their health, you know, their environment, their family either says, we're done with you. Mm. Like I remember my, one of my sponsors before he died, his spouse said, you know, you're killing yourself and you're not going to die in my house with me. You're going to, you get out. And so when he got thrown out of the house, that was his rock bottom. So the environment around you could either support the addiction to continue or could stop the addiction. So that's really a big one, you know. Uh, personal finances is a big one. Like, how are you keeping your addiction alive financially? Like, I was selling drugs to keep my addiction alive, and then I was working to keep my apartment and my lifestyle alive. You know, I could just got a car, yeah. you know, keep paying all my other bills. So that paid for that, but selling the drugs paid for my drug addiction. So how do you keep your addiction alive financially? And a lot of families are not realizing, but they're paying for their drugs. Right. You know, they're paying that $20 that buys that hit of fentanyl that kills them. Right. They're the ones paying for that. So financially, um, and then legal. I mean, hello, selling crystal is not legal. No, no. <laughs> That's all right, hello. <laughs> if you would have came to me when I was selling crystal and said, I'm going to have somebody tailing you, and anywhere you go, there's going to be a private investigator following you. Right. You're already paranoid on yeah. crystal, okay? Hell yeah. So if somebody would have told me that, I would have been like, oh, my God, so now everyone's going to get arrested? My, then my clients, all yeah. the people that I care about, they're going to get arrested? I can't do that. So that would stop the selling because I would be paranoid. And then, you know, when you're on Crystal, you think everybody's looking at you anyway, mm -hmm. right? So you're looking out your window, pull the shade <laughs> back. Oh, my God, they're out there. Oh, I'm not the only one that did that? No. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but now somebody told you that they're doing that. Yeah. So that's another way to raise that rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And then your spiritual rock bottom. You got to cry out to something bigger than yourself and say, please help me. So every single time I was at a meeting, I would hear what it was for those individuals. Like their liver went jaundiced and that they, you know, something happened to them mm -hmm. physically where they said, oh, I got to stop drinking. So physical, um, legal, um, environment, the family, um, financial. So when you start thinking of those things, when you do an intervention, you say, how do I get the air to knock out of them all at once instead of slowly doing one at a time? Mm -hmm. Because we talked about that before. If you yeah. do one at a time, like, oh, you're going to lose your job. So you lose your job and you're like, I don't need, I'm on unemployment. I don't need money. And then you lose your apartment because you can't afford it. Or first you lose your car right. or your apartment, whatever one you don't yeah. pay. Then after you're done losing that, then you lose the other one, the car or the apartment. And then you always want to have a phone. Well, then, uh, you know, if I lose my phone, if you get used to living without them for a certain amount of time, it's not powerful anymore. No. But if you take all of them at once, yeah. that's the air that needs to knock us if out. If you're able to rip it all away at yeah. the same time, because like we were talking about the girl that we interviewed on the street, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. I saw and, that. And that she, was a good, that was, was good. good. You know, really at good. that point, she's already comfortable in that environment. She doesn't have a phone. She doesn't have a home. She's, she had a bike. Yep. Yeah. All of them had bikes. Yep. Uh, of the ones that we interviewed, they 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 had bikes yep. still, but there were other ones that were in tents, you, you know, in, te in tent city, and it yes. was it was um it was intense. But she's already comfortable. Yeah, there. she is. You know, been there three, four, five years. Yeah, yeah. So how do you take something from them? Like that's why I say, if you notice a loved one is suffering, do the intervention before it gets there. Yeah. Because it's going to get there. Look at how the homeless population, how big it is in this country, right? Yeah. And it's just growing, it's just, especially with all the fentanyl. Yes. I mean, the fentanyl is ripping our, our families away from us. Yep. Ripping them. You're not just, not, not just to, to death, but to, you know, to the streets, to, you know, they're having all these things happen to them, you know? Yep. I mean, that girl has, is somebody's daughter. Could you imagine? Local. Yeah. She was local. She was born right around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
this other kid we interviewed, uh, this boy, handsome guy. Yeah. Handsome. Blue but eyes. Like, yeah. Just like, you know. Surfer kid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Reminds me of stunning, that, Yeah. Stunningly good looking. Yeah. Yeah, um, brown he's on hair. The streets too. Yeah, he was maybe a hundred pounds. Yeah, uh, and as and he's, he's like six foot. Yeah, hundred oh maybe. God. He was probably like you know, he's probably one thirty, one twenty. Really skinny. Really skinny. And we tried to, we tried to ask him questions, and he was so you know, uh, jacked up that yeah. he just didn't even know how to answer. No. He just, no way. Yeah, he was lost. We'll, we'll uh, put know. some of that out too. We're gonna we're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep going to that specific little area. Um, and, and see and see what we can do, see what 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 a difference we yeah. can make. Yeah, we're gonna find that girl. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna look. She, at I that think girl. she was she was like willing to go to treatment. Yeah, wow, yeah. really? Yeah, and I'm willing to put somebody like that yeah. in treatment that's ready to go. Yeah, we're gonna wow. get her. Yeah, we're gonna find if we see her again, we'll see her again. Yeah, we will. And it's just amazing that Brock kid. I remember his name, Brock, blue eyed Brock. Yeah. As he's leaving, he says, "Hey, man." I'm around all the time. Hook, uh, let's hook up, and you know we'll hit the beach, just me and you. All right, see you later. You know, like it was just natural, like normal. This yeah, is normal bro. life. Oh yes, I was. I was like, oh, all right, see you later, Brock. Like, why? It, I'm was, not gonna... it was super powerful yeah. and like a like a spiritual experience because it, I don't know um, that day was pouring rain here, yeah. pouring. Oh no and, way! Yeah, and we did a podcast, and I had already canceled us going out into the streets yeah. because. Uh, it was pouring rain. We finished our podcast and I looked out the window and it was cleared up, cleared up and the ground was dry. Wow. And I was like, never mind. I said, I, I went to Catherine next door and I said, uh, can you um, reschedule that quickly? And we're, we're going. So we, we headed downstairs to the uh, cafeteria. We put together 75 bag, uh, mm. bags of yep. food. Wow. Got, I got the clients here, the clients at Hope by the Sea to help us make sandwiches. Oh, nice. Yeah. Took two of them with us. That, oh, that's so cool. It was, it was like the best thing that they, they were just, oh these two God. guys are in like IOP and it was like, they, they were so thankful. Oh, yeah. Like, I can't believe you guys yeah. let us do this. This was so, this meant so much to us to be able to go out and do this. And, um, and it was, it was completely dry the whole time we were out. And as soon as we were done, yeah. I dropped Shane off back at his car and started pouring Run rain again? again. No way. Yeah. Like the, if you, you can't that's tell me that that's not a spiritual experience. Like yeah. God, God knew that this was something that we needed to do, that we wanted to do. That was part of his plan. And he, yep. you know, and these people need help yeah. and we need to show it. Yeah. We need to show yeah. that people need this kind of help. And yeah. there's stuff out there for them. Like there's so many like, I mean, if you get a good one, like, that needs help, I, we're good friends with uh, Villatat. Have you heard of them in Hawaii? No. So they're a two-year program. Mm. I don't think they do them that much, that, you know, that many places, but it's a work, get back to work. Yeah, I love that. So they yeah. do work the program. first six months in treatment. Yep. And then after that, they go into, um, what do they have, catering? Like, they do meals for wheels like they do uh like 300 meals for nice. every day yeah. in their you know kitchen yeah. so you could either do um culinary work you could do gardening they have a gardening company wow. yeah. you know that they do, do work. landscaping yes. so they have all these different companies construction company all these different companies that they do and they work there for a year and a half mm -hmm. to get back you know in that structured environment faith-based yeah. but it's a two-year faith-based at all or not real. I think they go to 12 steps, yeah. but not really. Yeah, that's any a good religion, spot. I'll but, have to get the name after. And, you know, and it's, they, they all do it by, you know, supporting each yeah. other, by going to work and supporting each other. Right. And, um, but I think we need more of that because it, what, what that tells me is, and why they're so successful, is they're giving them the time to heal their brains. Mm -hmm. Right. And then giving them the time to start building trust in themselves yeah. and community and community and community yeah. and start loving themselves yeah. or first start liking themselves right. and saying, Oh, I could do this. I could do this. And it, you know, there was one guy, like we hired them to come cut trees down in our house and then he finished a bill of tat and he was out. And there's another thing that they do there is um, they sand down concrete and then they restain it and paint it so it looks all the same, mm -hmm. like so it looks really good. Right. So we had that in our backyard, in our front, in our driveway. 
And um, he showed up and did that. And I was like, oh my God. And then they get hired by these companies. Yeah. And now they're productive cool. citizens that's of cool. society. But that's right. what it takes. That's what it takes. It takes two years. It takes, it takes two a years. year. I know another place in Florida, I think it's up there, it's called uh, Faith Farms. Mm-hmm. It's again, it's a work program. Yep. A, a Bible study program. You know, you're up at five in the morning, you're yep. working until 12, you're, you're doing Bible study. And then after six months, you get a job. Then you start paying your own way. Yep. They have that stuff out here. They have uh, Delancey Street in uh, San Fran. Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually hire a bunch of their um, people when they graduate. It's a two-year program. Oh, lot, really? Yeah, a lot of them, uh, uh, they get to go there in lieu of going to prison. Mm. Yep. And um, it's really, you know, structured yep. uh, work program. They have, uh, they, they have catering. They have um, uh, mo- a moving company. Yep. Um, oh, they also do those uh, bus tours, those um, celebrity bus tours. Oh, really? Yeah, home tours. Nice. Uh, yeah, they have buses, so you can be, you can get uh, a, a, the driver's license to drive the bus. Um, that but is they, amazing. They work twelve hours so, a day. Yeah. Every, in the for the first six months, you work twelve hours a day, seven days a week. Yep. And then and then it, then you get to have one day off yep. at some point. Yep. Um, and then towards the end, uh, you get to go out and, but you've already built this like huge resume right. Yes, and and they have a worth that work ethic, like you nobody's show business. Yeah. yeah. yeah they show showing up. up on time. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, I've hired, I've hired quite a few of them for, nice. uh, you know, behavioral health techs, That's give amazing. them a start in the, in the industry to go forward. Yeah. That's why we're doing this schooling. Like we talked about earlier is because if, we could give techs that are really positive and working hard mm-hmm. and want to make it. Let's put them in that. You know, it used to be, you know, to get your KDAC, you know, this, the hours. Yeah. It used to be um, two years. Yeah. You got to go to College of the Desert or some little college for two years. And no. for somebody that's newly sober, they, it's tough. two years, it's like, that sounds impossible. No. Like that's so far away from their reality. But if you could do that in four to six months, you're like, okay, I could do that. Yeah, that's feasible. Yeah, that yeah. that I I could realistically do. Because when I got sober, um, you know, I, I was either able to go to medical billing, schooling, um, dental hygiene, or home health aid. So there were the three certifications mm-hmm. that they gave away, you know, as being on unemployment. So I took the home health aid, and it's a six-month program. And when I finished my program, I was certified as a home health aide. But if we could give them the education that they need within, you know, four to six months, yeah. right? they'll start believing in themselves. So, right. And my yeah. goal is, okay, now let's go get your bachelor's. Let's go get your master's. Let's keep that going. Yeah, yeah you keep it going. You, yeah. you learned how to do it yeah. because that's what wasn't done for me. You know, I was told when I failed third grade, you know, you need to be on the short bus. Right. You're one of those. They right. use the R word, right? right. Well, back in the 70s, no. they were very friendly. Yeah, no. <laughs> no they not at all. They were not nice yeah. at all. People, no. were, people weren't nice. God, they were we mean. Were, we were talking about that, though, yeah. uh, a couple of times. Like, we were ta- we've been talking about this stuff that, like, what you just said, though. Uh, um, you know, my first accomplishment was becoming a certified personal trainer. Yep. Uh, that was the first thing I'd ever accomplished in my life because I'm, I'm a high school dropout. Yep. I dropped out the day I turned 18. I still had six months left of high school. Yep. Um, I wasn't going to graduate anyways, so yep. I was done. Um, I, I thought it would be a good idea to become a crystal meth dealer because I had a habit. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I wanted to support my habit. Um, needless to say, that didn't work out very well. I wasn't a good um, crystal meth dealer. There are none. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they don't never exist. Never profit. Okay? No, I never did. Never no one made never. profit. Yeah. Never made a profit. I'm always in the hole. <laughs> oh, I got to go get six hundred dollars. Where am I going to get six hundred? Yeah, where am I going to get six hundred dollars? I got two hundred. Yeah, <laughs> tag it on. It okay. was, yeah, I was not good. No good. Anyways, yep. so I was always I, I kept I was always stacking losses. And yep. this personal this uh, personal training certification was my first win, and it was kind of a big win, you know, huge. And and I was huge. like, and I became a fitness trainer, yep. and that's what I started doing. And I got uh, you know I had. I had um, also had another, so I had two jobs at the time and I was a shy kid yep. and I, you know, I was bullied when I was a kid. Yep. I, I wasn't, I, I, people didn't think I was smart. I was chubby, yes. you know, a lot of stuff, man. Mean. Mean. Kids are mean. Yeah. 
I think kids are still mean. They're still mean. Yeah. They're still bullying going which, on. Which, which, which uh, we were debating with, uh, with Frank the other day on the fact that we were all bullied. I, I was, I bullied back though. Yeah. When people bullied me, I bullied back. Um, I, I was, uh, so I wasn't, I wasn't a bully, but I would bully bullies. Um, but I'm I am who I am today. Yeah, uh, it builds the character. It built yeah. character. Yeah, uh, yeah. like I would never change it. Like I'm so grateful. Like that happened to me. Yeah, because I would have never been where I'm at today. Right. Like that character that it builds and it makes you almost makes you stronger. Stronger. Like yeah, but push. there's there's suicide today in the kids. I didn't I didn't hear of back then of someone killing themselves. Well, you know the online bullying is pretty bad. Really yeah, bad. now it's twenty four seven. Yeah. Yeah. You, you go home, you can't turn the computer on, you're bullied there. I mean, at least... Kids need to learn, like, like, I don't read negative... I don't read comments really at all. Yeah. You know, every once in a while, so, so the, the only thing that actually ups... Anybody could say whatever they want to, to me, like in a comment or in anything. The only thing that pisses me off is when they, when they say those people um, have a choice, you oh, know. Oh, that drives me nuts, right? <laughs> yeah, I want to... I, I get mad. That's yeah. the only thing that makes me mad. Like when what somebody choice, yeah. right? What I, choice. I, does does the does the diabetic have a choice not to produce in uh, his own insulin right. in his body anymore? No, he does not. But he does have a choice to follow the 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 guidelines that the doctor has laid out for him to get better. Mm -hmm. yep. Um but you you almost have to intervene. My dad's a diabetic. He loves a donut. Loves it. <laughs> Yeah. Keep my I my I've seen you know my dad it was part of this company for for or part of Hope by the Sea, um, for a long time. A long time. And I had a desk and we used to have partner desks. Oh, you did? Yeah, for oh, a I long didn't know time. That. Oh, yeah. Nice. Um, at our one of our old buildings. And I'd be sitting in my mom's office. I look over him, and my dad's got the drawer open. Donuts. No. Jesus. Sneaking a donut. Oh my God. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my God! Yeah. You know, and diabetics have, but diabetics crave sugar. Yes, like an addict craves drugs, drugs, yep. or an alcoholic craves alcohol. Yep. You know, it's it's a much deeper part of the brain. Yeah. You probably know the exact terminology, which I don't, but it's way deeper in the primitive part of the brain mm -hmm. where addiction lies. It totally. doesn't. It doesn't lie up here in the. What is this? The frontal, frontal co cortex. Yeah. Yeah, it's way back there. And, and it's deep, like, you know, when we're working with people, you know, the trauma is what got us to become addicted, because yeah. society told us we're a piece of shit, we're never going to accomplish anything. So when you do drugs, or you drink, you don't care if people care about what they think about you, right? So you just say, Oh, my God, I feel so much better now. So then all of a sudden that becomes your norm mm -hmm. to be loaded because you don't care if mm -hmm. somebody's going to tell you you're a piece of shit or you need to be on the short bus, you right. know, and you know how to take care of yourself as an adult. But when you're in your disease, it just keeps feeding that and feeding that and feeding that until somebody has to break that cycle. And that's why interventions, oh, you know, an intervention always happens. Like I love when people say, Oh, Ken, I didn't need an intervention. I came on my own to recovery. And I'm like, well, what was the fucking circumstance? Okay. Yeah. Right. Hello. Yeah. You didn't come Police because you just got engaged. Oh, yeah. We say that all the time. It's like yeah. when, when an addict picks up the phone, yeah. the, the phone to call, um, you know, Shane, sometimes people actually get to talk to Shane. Yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll call yeah. and Shane answers the phone. Oh, yeah. I love actually it. a lot. I, I he, love it. He's yeah. like, he's like crazy sometimes because the phone will ring and he'll be like, he'll be like looking at it and he's like <laughs> before anybody else could get it because yeah. it ring, rings like 10 phones at yeah. the same time. I, I need it. I need it. I need it. I just, I need it. Yeah. I need to talk to someone each day. Yeah. Every hour I need to talk to somebody. I love that. Yeah. And he, he does a he does a really good job, but the the point is is that when that person calls, um, and Shane answers the phone, they're not having the best day of their no, life. Oh, that's they're, their intervention. They yeah. are having the worst. Something happened. Yeah. If you dissect it, mm -hmm. you will find out either their spouse is leaving them, their job is onto their yeah. bullshit. Yeah, something bad is happening in their right. lives. So they may have made that choice to pick up the phone. 
but it wasn't because something good happened. No. Right. It's, it's not right. because they just, uh, you know, uh, scored on a thousand dollar lottery ticket and have money to go buy another, you know, whatever it is uh, that they use. Bag of you know, dope. Bag of dope or, yeah. you know, a box, a box of uh, wine. Wine. Yeah. No, a box that did not wine. happen. Yeah. No, no it's, by it's, the time you're drinking box wine, it's you're, like, you're, it's too it's late. Too, uh, no, it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. Hi, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> next, Anybody who's <laughs> drinking box wine. Sorry. You got no chance. <laughs> no, we want those guys to call. Yeah. Those yes. are the ones. But that's Those are the takes. ones. That's or you're the, drinking the bottom of the the bottom of the the plastic bottle, uh, p- p- vodka. Yeah. yeah, it's not good. Yeah, yep. that's and the jumping it, off point. That's what it says in the big book, right? That's yeah. the jumping off point when they call. And that, but the problem with that is it only lasts, like you said earlier, yeah. it's a short it's a window. Sliver, yeah. Short window. It is a short window. And, and that's window. the that's the thing. So like with the way it is right now, you know, insurance is great. Pre- Private insurance is great. Yeah. It's not great, but for this part, it's great. Yeah. You can call me in the most devastating time of your life, and I can get you into treatment in that window. Yep. It's like four hours, yep. right? And you could be, you know, sitting here in the lobby, yeah. um, you know, doing your ad- admissions, yep. see, seeing, seeing our nurse. Yep. Um, and not the same thing for it's not the same thing for everybody. It's not the same thing for people who don't have insurance. Um, it's a struggle with veterans. Uh, what else? Homeless people. Yep. I, I mean, Medi-Cal, call back tomorrow. We might have a bed. Call back in a week. We might have a bed. Um, they, don't, they don't call back. And that's what's, no. ro- that's what's broken in our system. When that window opens, they're like, you know, and I know a lot of treatment centers that are government funded or, you know, Medi-Cal. They'll say, um, call me back next week and, or call me every day. Every day. Eight o'clock. Every, every day yeah. at eight o'clock. Show commitment. And show me like you really yeah. want, want this. But the window doesn't stay open that long. So our job is to, when the window opens, figure out what that window, why, what opened that window mm-hmm. and now magnify it. Mm-hmm blow it up yeah. so it keeps it open you know because the minute it shuts down you know you could go seven years without that right. window opening again I agree. I agree. so if you're not dead by that yeah. time right so magnify what open that window keep that fresh in their brain so they know like oh my god if i don't do this this is gonna happen and then show them like your life could change yeah. Your life can change, yeah. but you got to keep that window open because that's where we lose them. Right. The window shuts. And we're losing, you know, uh, this isn't just, that's the other part of the, the those people comment that I have. Those people, those people are your sons, your daughters, your moms, your dads, yep. your grandkids. Veterans uh, who fought for us. Veterans who have fought wars for us. Yeah. Uh, it's um, it's grandparents. Yep. We have grandparents in here right now. Yeah. Yep. We saw grandparents. We have on the probably grand. Yeah. The other oh, day. that's a, yeah. Sixty-two year old man. Sixty-two year old man. For, for oh, Sixty-two. My, God. Iran. My Iran. Saddest thing Sad. ever, man. Yeah. Holy broke his. He's like he's like neck. Doing, started off the pills. Yeah. From the doctor. Now he's fentanyl, homeless. You know. Stuff's just. Pouring out of his nose as he's interviewing us, wouldn't yeah. look us in the eyes. No, not oh once. my god! Not, didn't even look up. No, and but he had a he's smart man. A lot to say. Yeah. Final comment was what? Um, I hope there's a god after, and I could meet him, or something like that. Like something real intense. Oh it's on tape. We'll, we'll release it. But yeah, just a crazy, crazy. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of editing to do yeah. for that day. It was amazing. Holy cow! Yeah. Could you imagine? I want to. I I want to show <laughs> this stuff. I want to sit up in front of Congress. I I actually do want to talk to politicians. Like yeah. this isn't like a joke. Like I want to sit in front of Congress and I want to ask them. I want I want to have all of this. That's why I'm doing this. Is yeah. why I'm doing it. Like my, my my real why is like you know Justin died and that gave me the the, yeah. the power to to like do something different and like I don't care if I make a dollar off of this or. Mm-hmm. Or if I make a million, it doesn't, none of that shit matters to me. I want these <laughs> kids to have a voice. He was a good kid. He was, he was a loving man. Um, he was just starting off in life. Yep. Um, somebody sold him a, 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 a pressed Percocet. Yep. You know? No, I don't know. 
No, that's what they <coughs> told me. Fucked up. I'm pressed Percocet. Yeah, it's crazy. Thank God that I'm clean and sober. Yeah, today. man. Right? Somebody would have sold my kid a pressed Percocet. Dead. Uh, yeah. Years ago. And it's happening every day right every day. now. And if, every if the government doesn't change the laws yeah. around it, it's, you know, what are we at? 120,000 people a year? A year. Or sh- I, you, I, uh, uh, you said it in the in the the sizzle reel that we did. Yeah, three hundred people. It's it's like a plane going down every single day. Every airport would be closed down in this world if, if a, a plane was oh going yeah. down every day. Oh yeah, we wouldn't have no. There'd well, be no transportation. This is, by a, this is yeah. a, a this, I think this is actually a pandemic because I you know an epidemic is if it's in, if it's in one country right. Yep. Uh, but this isn't. I I was talking to somebody. Like even in Iran, yeah, oh, yeah. where like y- you get caught doing this stuff, you're dead. Yep. Soccer moms are addicted to fentanyl. Oh, yeah. yep. In Iran, huge opiate problem yep. in Iran, Iraq, huge. Who was telling us that? I wasn't telling you. You? Yeah. No. Huge problem. Yeah. It wasn't you. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Somebody was telling them both of us. I feel like. I can't recall. Hmm. Hmm. Are you from Iran? I'm not. No, you're from Canada. <laughs> but you're yeah, it like it with his beard yeah. there's a huge problem <laughs> looks, out there huge well that's opiates it's uh that's the heroin opium is out there that's yeah. where it's brought in right well fentanyl is uh fentanyl is synthetic yeah yeah it's uh it's coming across man and it's like here's the thing right i mean this is a bipartisan issue oh, yeah. this shouldn't even be an issue i know like uh we shouldn't be they should be working to what are we going to do? They should be working with us is what they should do together. Yeah, together. Could you, and, and all we need is to, to make this so simple, right? Is have a national law like Florida has a Baker act or a Marchman act. Mm-hmm. So if a loved one is suffering from mental health, it's a Baker act. If it's drug or alcohol, mm-hmm. then it's the Marchman act. Mm-hmm. Have those two laws that are nationwide right. and, then the problem, the reason why Florida doesn't really push it that much is because what happens in Florida is where do you place them? Mm-hmm. You know, great, we're going to Baker Act them, but where are you going to place them? What treatment center is going to be able to take yeah. them? And then, like you said, work with treatment centers, partner with them to be able to fund instead of spending all this stupid money on all this crap that they do out there, right. fund the treatment that once their Baker Act or Marchman Act, fund the treatment that they need for a minimum of a year. Yeah. You know, 90 days of treatment, some form of sober living yeah. and, you know, case management or peer-to-peer, do that for 12 months and then see the results it's, you're going to get. Mm-hmm. And it's cheaper than, I, I mean, even private insurance companies, it's like they would save money yeah. if yep. they would do that same thing. Yep. It should be something, if, if it's private insurance, they should have to do the same thing. Yep. You know, but we should also have the same funds. Yep. You know, you could, they could actually set a price for it that, that, that is um, conducive to everybody. Right. Yep. Like instead of like treatment centers, you know, uh, this treatment center makes this much money, but this treatment center charges this. It's like, you know, get a, get something that everybody can like do business together yes. and, um, you know, and survive and survive, you know, cause you can't survive off of medical rates. No, no treatment it's center impossible. can survive no. off of medical rates. You can't survive you're off giving of giving them treatment. You can't no, survive not. off you of can't. what blue you're shield not. of California is paying. No, like it, it's impossible. You can't, you cannot, ch- like not but they want nurses and doctors yeah, and they all want, this stuff, but you can't and, afford and that. They, and then they want to charge, uh, pay $450 a day for, uh, for, for detox. Yeah. I mean, I says, I'm talking, that's blue shield of California. It's horrible. Yeah. A hundred and, uh, $72 a day for residential. So 80, 80 for IOP, or 80 whatever. For IOP. but they want the best clinicians. They want them yeah. licensed. They want them certified. Right? They want all these demands but who's going to work for that money? Right. Nobody. You're not going to find anybody to work. You're, First year guys. You're looking for looking for hours. That's minimum it. wage people. Yeah, if right. you're going to be paying four hundred a yeah. day, and, and at that price, you don't care. Yeah, you're just showing up, and, and then you just yeah, you're pushing, yeah. you're pushing, you're, you're pushing, you're pushing paper. paper. That's yeah. it. You're you're coming, you're clocking in, you're clocking out. Yeah. You're not dedicated to your. Client. And if you care, you're burnt out in twelve months. Yeah. Yep. And now you're looking for another job because you're you know you're drinking yourself. In. Yep. Yeah. So, but but my point is, they would save money. 
a uh, lot in the, of money in the long run. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, you might have to spend a little bit more money on the front end uh, to, to get them sober. But like how many with private insurance, as you know, it's like they get um, they come in like it seems like nowadays the average is uh, 45 days. And that includes IOP, right? You're yep. not, you got detox, RTC, PHP, IOP, and then that's, that's supposed it. to be it. That's it. That's you're it. Done. You're done. You're good to go at 45 days. Yep. You're healthy. You can, uh, you can, you can put your life back together on your own Yep. at that point. Um, so they relapse in two weeks, mm -hmm. uh, four weeks, six weeks, and then they need to go back to treatment yep. and they do it all over again. Yep. It, it, it ends up costing the insurance company more than if they would just Give pay for the, the long term Give treatment. Them a year. Yeah. A minimum. By the time you're at the by the time you're at six six months, yep. the, this part isn't gonna cost very much. This no. the six months to, to the twelve month period. It's gonna minimal. Minimal. Yep. Minimal. <laughs> and yeah, it's not happening and we're still watching more people die. Every day. And more people than ever. Ever. And not only that, then we're watching people die, but the people like the families aren't, I guess that's another way is maybe if the families worked with their politicians and right. fought with them and say, we will fight to elect you in if you're willing to do these things. Right. Because everybody knows somebody that died from everybody. this. Everybody. Everybody. Knows. At this point, everybody yeah. knows. Yeah. Everybody knows somebody that died from this. Mm -hmm. So close family or just a friend, you know, somebody that's died from this it's time for the public to step up and demand this from our politicians. Right. And I'm hoping that's what this show will do is start educating the public. Like we got to start making some demands. Yeah, right. And voice. that's like, that. that's why we, we you know, we want to be the voice. We need everybody to start following us, yeah. whether you like us or you don't like us. Uh, if we're, if we're boring or we're not boring, you know, nobody has to listen to every single episode, yeah. but if you, if they subscribe and yes. they, and they, and they like the ones that they like, and we have a humongous following, you can guarantee that the Hopeaholics has a lot of powerful people that work in this industry yep. that will be sitting right next to us up in Congress. Cause yes. I'm not going, going alone because I don't like, I don't like speaking in public. <laughs> so, you know, if I have a group of people with me, yeah, I can speak then we in public. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to have like powerful people, yes. you know, that's what we need. Yeah. Have Ken Seeley up there. I've a got a lot of powerful yeah. people to get up there. I mean, I know, yeah. I know treatment center owners, you know, yes, more people than I people. do. And people like you more than they like me because I, I, I just put my head down and did my own thing. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I wasn't really, um, I, I wasn't really, I mean, the Carlson family is well known yeah. just because we've been around so long and we yeah. were just like, you know, during, <laughs> during the old era when it was like the super fun, it was fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember I because uh, I didn't know you well back then, but like uh, you would come in and I was like, "Oh, there's Ken from the show," you know. Yeah. I get a little, like, get a little I can't excited. Remember how we met? I can't, I can't remember how we met, but it's got to be five, six, seven years now. Oh, at least, yeah, yeah. At least. yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. Psh. Yeah, we yeah. haven't known each other very long. No newbies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I stayed on them though. You I did, on right? Him. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 yeah you're a great guy. And you're changing lives every day. Well, know? we all are. Yeah, That's no, an but you've part. helped. Yeah, you've helped a lot of people. Yeah, right from know? the start. You and know? I, I enjoy. I enjoy. Uh, uh, I've really enjoyed the past a uh, year or two, though, to, to do business with you. Oh and, my God, um, it's been heaven. you know be a part of uh, the Ken Seeley communities, yeah. the Infinity Group. Oh, um, it's been heaven. It's it's yeah. been like a dream that I've had for the last. I think in 2017 is when I first started thinking that way. Like. I just want to partner with somebody that you num number one trust. Right. Yeah, you guys have been doing this over twenty years, right. so, because I'm not really good. Like we talked about earlier, I'm more of like the dreamer that keeps wanting to build, yeah. build different things, but I'm not good at the daily operations. Yeah, it's just not where my passion's at. It's like I, I'm I could do it, I did it, but. It's like, I rather have somebody manage it. And we try right. to get managers in there. And every time we did it, it didn't work. But what you have with Infinity, it's amazing because everybody has their specialty. Yeah. Everybody, like the clinical, the operations. I didn't pay them for this either. <laughs> <laughs> they all have their specialty, yeah. right? Yeah. And they're all doing like top level jobs, like corporate. Yes. And they're bringing that into each operation. Yeah. And so you're getting, even though we're a small 
company, right. you know, in Palm Springs, we're getting the corporate structure of a big company. Right. And that just, there's no better gift than that. It's like, now you really know you're getting everything that you've been doing, but it's exhausting to do it with just two people. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I have to give, I have to give props to my team because I'm like you, I'm a dreamer. I, 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 I am involved in, uh, big decisions but not yeah. not day-to-day -day operation i have been yeah you know we and, all have, yeah. Uh, like the carlson family ran 80 bed hope by the sea uh just like four of us just for you know years yep 18 years until until covid hit that's when my mom retired yeah then we were like man you know i can't have my dad was older i was yeah. like i can't have yeah. I cannot have my dad chilling with COVID yep. around. And it was gnarly because nobody knew what was going on. Yeah, You know what the funny thing is, though? It's not funny. It's funny because everything worked out. <coughs> but they quarantined for nine months straight. Really? Yeah, nine months. They were quarantined in the house. We were we were doing crazy stuff in the, here because, like, we, we were, you know, California was locked down. Yeah, so was... We were having to do, like, telehealth groups in the, ha in the houses. Yep. And the, but all of my staff chose to come to work because we were a... We were a uh, um, what do you call it? Type of business where essential. essential business, right? <laughs> Thank you, Michelangelo's <laughs> awesome. Michelangelo knows <laughs> that word is. <laughs> knows that word. It's, it's grateful to have somebody listening. Right. Who, anyways, um, so long story short, my mom had uh like her blood pressure just went skyrocketed. So my dad had to call the ambulance. My mom went to the hospital they, during COVID. They, during COVID, they kept her for two days um, at the hospital. And, um, I went and like took food to my dad. Um, I took him an egg burrito on Sunday and Monday morning I, I get to work and I'm like, oh man, I'm not feeling very good. So I stay here and I, I had Cindy swab my nose and, and I went home and I woke up on Tuesday and I was like, I have fucking COVID. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can't taste I, nothing. <laughs> I, I was, I woke up and I, I knew, I felt like I hit with him yeah. by a Mack truck. Oh my God. And, um, I was like, Oh fuck. I was just at my dad's. Oh my so, God. so that I sent, I sent everybody, I sent, um, my sister over to, to swab my dad and my dad came back positive for COVID. Two days Did? later, my mom came, <gasps> my dad's 86 years old at the oh time. Oh my God. 86, diabetic, right. heart problems. Shh. All the Pro things they prone said. To, prone to pneumonia. Yeah, right. I'm like, fuck, man. Oh I'm like, my! Calling. God. I'm like, I'm. I'm like, I have COVID, and I'm like calling my mom every like hour. What's his What's his pulse ox? Yeah. You know, how's he breathing? My dad's it's the like, oxygen level. Yeah. My dad's like, he, he he's like, if you wouldn't have told me I had COVID, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't have even know. known. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm sick as I'm sick as fuck. Wow, I was sick. Yeah, yeah. Wow. my dad, it's, my dad. Thank amazing. God. But you know, thank God. Yeah, because right? not everybody had it like that. Yeah, um, my mom got pretty sick. She had. We both got the the chest stuff really yeah. bad. Um, but we all made it through. My wife, everybody got it. And that was the original, yeah. right? The original. SARS COVID two. Yeah, SARS COVID two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> before before the uh I haven't had a COVID since. Oh really? You yeah. only got it the once? Yeah. Because I had it one I pr I think I had it twice. I think I had it before COVID came out because yeah. I got really sick in that December. Yeah. And then um I got sick the following January. Mm. So I had it I think twice. I know definitely the second time was definitely COVID. Yeah. You got tested. Yeah. Yeah. One. And then the first three times we tested, no, you're negative, you're negative. And I was like, <laughs> I'm really sick. So then I went down to the three day one that you had to wait, yeah. and I was like, oh yeah, it's positive. Oh yeah, you know there were so much scams during the COVID oh, time yeah. in the industry. Like w people were selling us COVID tests. Yes, that that didn't work. Yes, so, so those like, were the ones I was taking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we were, we're, we're just water. We're, we're, we're testing all the freaking the, all the clients, and yes. like nobody's positive. Nobody's positive come to find out none of our tests worked yep. <laughs> during that time yeah it, it was like right when they were they, they hadn't really come out with the test yet yeah but all these these scam labs were coming by and we bought i mean i think i spent five thousand dollars on bunk tests <laughs> <laughs> i i just found some the other day oh, I was did you? Like, yeah i was like here's here's those tests we bought oh my god that didn't work at all <laughs> that everybody tested negative <laughs> it was and they were the kind that you had to prick your finger. Oh no way! And drop oh, yeah, drop yeah, the, the blood, blood on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it yeah. absolutely didn't work. 
<laughs> so damn, that was good times. Yeah, we had a really good time. I never look at the. Uh, did you even flip it? No. Oh, you did. We don't know. We we had to see if that was an hourglass. We 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 don't. We just go as long as we feel like going. Yep. That was fun, man. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that's nice good to see you both. Yeah, oh my god. You, yeah. Hopefully, I'll be back in Hawaii soon. Yeah, you guys have to guys, come visit. When are you guys going back? Um, we're going back on the sixth. On the sixth. So in a couple weeks. Yeah, my wife and I will come to Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know when because we have our next trip is a big family trip to uh, to Italy. Yeah, we're, we're doing that. Um, soon. What month? May. May. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do that in May. And then after that, like I don't travel well. Yeah. Like. I'm surprised you're going, bro. Huh? I'm surprised you're going. Yeah, well, we bought tickets like er early. Yeah. Um, there's this one day a year my sister knows about where all tickets are like really cheap. Really? And like the only way I'm flying to Italy is, is in the laydowns. Of course. I'm not, can't I'm do not, it any other way. I'm not flying in the... in the. No. No. Not you anymore. Can't. No. I'm too, I'm too old it's for 12, that. 12, 13 hour flight. Right. Yeah, we're going straight LAX to Paris, yep. which is like... 11, 12 hours, yeah. and then LA, uh, Paris to Naples. Yeah, nice. But perfect. we're staying in the Amalfi Coast. Have you been there? Never. You've been there? No. Huh. Never. That's what I was hoping somebody was going to be like, so, there so there it's day. really beautiful. I saw here. I just happened beautiful. to see a picture. It is beautiful. Is that where White Lotus was this last season? White Lotus? You don't watch White Lotus? Oh. <laughs> no, do I need to watch <gasps> that? Have you seen White no. Lotus? Oh, my God. You have to see White Lotus. Is it on Netflix or? One of those. I don't even know what White it's on. White Lotus. But it's All right, really Donna. Fun. Donna, have you watched White Lotus? <laughs> she hopefully well, she'll be watching. We'll see if she watches right? the podcast That's to the she, end. My wife doesn't watch them. She doesn't watch yeah. them at all. No, not even. Doesn't even start them. Baron, come on, come on, Baron. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, White Lotus is White Lotus. So yeah. it's all right, a, I'm going to start tonight. It's a, um, it's a you go. They go on vacation. These really wealthy and resort areas. Mm -hmm. So during COVID, they shot it at the Four Seasons in Maui. Mm -hmm. So like, and it's all about these really wealthy people, and then how the staff handles these wealthy people, and how they work together to make their experience and their satisfy trip them. I, I, and my, satisfy. We watch something. My wife watches something when they're on a the boat. Yes. Are you talking doing, about um, a cruise that uh, there's a family that rents a yacht out or? friends yeah I, I can't think of what it's called so year one is in hawaii the second year is in it italy nice so season two is in italy so you should watch it before you go oh that's the last thing i wanted to to talk about uh just before we before we end uh you created the show yeah yeah we did we did and we did yeah, a, we, yeah we did a sizzle reel yes. for the show we're so excited about mm. that oh, yeah God. Tell tell us about the your yeah. whole uh, the whole concept behind it. I know about it. Shane Shane, do you, Shane probably doesn't know. I don't know. I wasn't it. included on this. No, one. he wasn't. Oh my no, God. I, Where I was were left you? out. Well, obviously, I did not get an invitation. Oh my no. God! How did he get left out of this one? Quite shocked now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the hell's now. going on here, he was, bro? He was say, "Hey, you he should have been he's here." My, he's my damn co-host on the podcast. The so hell he is going to just on? Be quiet. Oh my God! <laughs> like, he said, "If it goes to uh, if we if it gets picked up." No, on he me. kept going. Like, can I get like? I'll he get kept on. bugging me. I'll can get I get on. a guest appearance? I'll get on. <laughs> like, he <laughs> really get was. On. Can I get on? I'll get on. Let it go to season one. I'll be here every fucking day. There you go. He'll be standing in the background. Like, you guys better put me on for sure. I'm not missing out. No, no. Oh my God! Every day. But I, I, I think it's the next step because yeah. you know intervention has been on God since 2004. Yeah, so when they first started air or taping, and 2005 is when it aired. Mm. So I mean, how many shows have been on that many years, right? Not a lot. And it was canceled for one year out of the whole time, but then they ran reruns, and the reruns had such a high volume of mm. watchers they picked it back up. So I'm going out next week or the uh, next week or the week after I'm going to do another episode. So, I mean, it's still going yeah. all these years later, but everybody that I run into ask me what happens next, right? What happens next? Yeah. So, you know, you go to detox and that's why we, you know, detox plus yep. because they go to detox and what's after detox, because we're seeing all the devastation before going mm. to detox. But there's a lot of devastation that happens see, yeah. in detox. Like right. there's a lot of 
like it's it's like an exorcism I like to talk about. You know, like you get them in their full blown addiction, and now you're going to take them out of it. It's like that's a major process. Yeah. That doesn't just happen for everybody. Yeah, for it's everybody. A, it's a major process, and it's like um, the stuff that happens is so uh, amazing. Um, yes, it's drama filled. Oh, so it will capture people's attention. But the healing that happens oh. is just, it's so like powerful. People are going to be watching this show, you know, for forever. And it seems like for me, and I'm just going to throw it out there that like, this is, this, this is like an easy yes for A&E yeah. because it's like, you have the intervention show. This show will probably be bigger. Oh, if, I do. If, I believe if, so. If you ask me, yeah. it'll be bigger than the intervention show. And it, and, and I don't actually keep the intervention show okay. running for yeah. another 20 years. Yeah. Because people are going to want to watch the intervention show. And not that they'll be the, the same people who are on the show, unless they want to change yeah. the show a little bit. They could. Yeah. They could do interventions and send all, Some of, of, them all could of them. Some of them could come. Yep. Yeah. Some of those people could go straight over here and you could watch and see what happens. Because all you see on the show now is... The inter the, the drama before. Yep. You see the amazing intervention. Yep. Uh, you you see them get dropped off yep. at the treatment center, and then you see you see what happens ninety days later. Whether they whether they changed, whether they um, left, whether yep. whatever it is, you know, there's many different um, things that happen at, at the end of every episode. Uh, but to actually see what goes on in that ninety in, days in, during that ninety day period. It's, it's like miracles. It's, it's miracle after but miracle it's, after miracle. It's constant redirecting. Mm -hmm. Like they're stuck in their disease and the clinical team and the treatment team, they all have to redirect constantly. Right. It's redirecting. Constant, um, it's, so it's interventions inside of the treatment center. It's, it's daily interventions. Yes. I mean, people want to leave. Oh, uh, all the wanna, time. People want to fight. Yes. People want to uh, hook sex. up with other people. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's exactly what I Fuck each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what's you the know? next thing that feels good yeah, besides right? drugs? Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right? The next thing that feels good. Food. Yeah. yeah. Sex. Right? All cigarettes. Of that. Yeah. And Caffeine. anger. Like a anger. lot of people are addicted to their anger. Mm -hmm. So they, they need the dopamine that anger kicks in. So now they're not getting it with drugs and alcohol. So let me get angry at something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember I went, when I was in treatment, I said, oh yeah. I said, um, they're closing down the pool. Meanwhile, I didn't pay a dime to get in treatment. My insurance paid, right? right. And I'm like, we paid a lot of money to be in this fucking place. I you need that. to open up the pool or I'm every leaving. Day. Every day. Okay. Every, every day. day. And I'm screaming and yelling. And then I get all the whole people all, all riled up. up. Yeah. I say, You're all, my friend has a pool right down the street. You Let's all go to guy. my friend's house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so everybody's, like, yeah, yeah. So like, we're all rallying against the treatment God. center. This is the insanity that yeah. still happens in treatment. Right. And so then as... They're all going to treat, or I'm getting ready to get my friend to pick us all up. They're like, I'm not fucking going. They all chickened out on me. And then I was like, well, I can't be a fucking chicken. I got to go. So you went? So I went. <laughs> I was like, fuck. I was like, this God. is insane. But that's, that's the, the shit insanity. that yeah. happens. And it's an exorcism that happens. Yeah. After processing and groups and therapy and all this shit that goes on in there, something magical happens where the light bulb turns on. Yeah. And I, I was just asked about this and I started crying when I told somebody about it because it was like so powerful for me. Like this guy in Palm Springs, I was, I've been down there and I'm working out at the gym, right? In the mornings at five in the morning. And so I'm down there working out at the gym and this guy comes up to me and just like the guy in, what do you call it? In, um, in Sherman's. And he goes, Hey, Ken, he goes, um, he goes, do you remember me? And I was like, oh God, here we go again. What the fuck is this? <laughs> right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, what's up? He goes, I just want to tell you that your staff and everything that you've done means so much to me because everybody in my life gave up on me. Oh, yeah. Everybody. Nobody was there for me, but your staff didn't give up. Right. And that's what happens mm -hmm. in treatment. We don't give up on them. Man. And he said, and now I got four years wow, clean. that's cool. Four years yeah. clean because we didn't give up on him in treatment. And he's going to be an asshole, right? They're going to be assholes. They're going to create a lot of drama. They do. That's what we do in treatment. 
but the yeah. clinical and the, the treatment team doesn't give up. They stick by them and fight for them. And that's why I think this show is going to be so powerful. And I can tell you from uh, 22 years of experience that the most difficult patient is um, sometimes the most successful yes. in their story. They come back and they're just like, oh, my God, you know, you saved my life. I can't believe you, what an asshole I was. And, you know, I hear that stuff all the time. All the time. I, I um, um, somebody had put, I have, you know, my Facebook is just like, rows of people that have you know for a friend requested me and i went through today and just like i'd like accepted some yep. you know um since my life isn't as private as it used to be yeah uh, since i'm doing this so i was like okay it's time like it's it's fine i can open back up it's it's time for me to do that now one of the people that i um had accepted their friend request a couple hours later sent me a facebook message and was like when you accepted my friend request, I cried wow. because you you saved my life years ago. And I in my mind, I was like, well, I didn't save your life, but I, I had the vessel that helped you do the work to save yes. your own life. Um, but it made me happy. Yeah. Yes. I was like, I, I mean, I am really like, I was like, cool. I was like, yay. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I am so glad to hear that. Wow. You know? And they were probably the biggest asshole when they were in treatment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's the way it goes. But they're getting their lives back because of that process. That's right? better than And anything. we got to show that. Yeah. Well, and it's all, we also show the super good yeah. to show the public what it goes on in treatment because, um, you know, uh, people that the clients will call their parents or, or you know, or a, or a wife or a husband, um, they'll call their loved ones. And um, there's no there's no food in the house. Uh you know, they're, they're mean to me. This, it's like, um, I, it's like I'm in jail and I mean, I can guarantee you it's nothing like being in jail. Uh, I promise you. Want to try jail? Yeah. <laughs> we could get you there. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes it's good for people to spend like five days in yeah. jail before they come to treatment. You I know? love so that part. All of a sudden you're real, real yeah. grateful, <laughs> you know? Um, but it's like, you got to do, cause you take the drugs and alcohol away. And for the first time ever, you're sitting with your crap. Yes. And not just the crap that you had before you started using yep. the crap that you had before you started using, plus all the crap that you uh, created while you were using. Yes. And now you have nothing to mask it anymore and it's painful Yep. and you want to look to blame. I want to blame Ken. It's yep. his fault. I want to blame, uh, you know, uh, um, it's Shane's fault. Really? It's yeah. It's Shane's fault. <laughs> it's always Shane's fault. It's always my Shane lied. <laughs> Shane lied to me on the phone. Yes. He told yes. me that there was going to be a swimming pool. Yep. You know, you know why would you say that? There are we, swimming pools, bro. Huh? There are swimming pools. Not at pools. pillars. <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop. Stop. And what about my o massage? Every ocean day? view. <laughs> <laughs> what about ocean view at pillars <laughs> there is a beautiful ocean view beautiful ocean but, view. we don't give massages here ken no. <laughs> we actually we do have there, you there told is a bed. me there is a bed you told there, me there is a room there used to oh, be there's not there a room used to anymore be. no um there there, uh, there is a massage therapist that would love to come back and give massages yeah. um which is i'm fine with if somebody wants to pay for their own massage yeah. um it's not part of your insurance so it doesn't yeah, they won't you know, pay that they're not going to pay for you no. to get a massage through well, you're in treatment. But the point being is that's what they do. They want yeah. to attack yeah. whatever you say, twist it, yeah. bring it back to their family and say, you know, I'm in go. Palm Springs and I don't have an ocean view like Shane told yeah. me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big mountain in front of it and it's yeah. two hours away. Yeah. But, but it's like, you know, that what they do. Um, and it's not even that stuff. It's like, you know, you, you're sitting there and you're in pain. And um, even if like it, that stuff doesn't come up, um, I don't like this place. It's not going to be, this place isn't the place that's going to help me, yep. which that could be true that we are not, you know, not every buddy is the perfect fit here, but you got to be ready to do the work. I can yeah. guarantee you if you're ready to do the work, then the, the, any this one of the place. any yeah. of our places, Ken Seeley exactly. communities, yeah. any one of them, there's pillars, so many options, hope I lodge. Agree. They're all, they're all good. And, and that's the part that I think the TV show needs to show that. Yes. And, um, poor Eric, uh, we, he's, he's chilling. I was there. <laughs> I just saw him. Um, but, we, we really need to get the show so that people can see yes. what goes on in yeah. treatment. And, and then not be afraid to go. not be afraid yeah. to go. That's yeah. how you save lives. Yeah. 100%. So if anybody says anything different, 
I don't even care. Yeah. I don't even want to hear it. The light bulb. When you see that light bulb turn on, that's what I want people to see in this show. Like yeah. what it took to get that light bulb to turn on. Right. Because if we could demonstrate that, I guarantee you, we won't need as many interventions because the people are going to say, I want to see if that could happen for me. I want to get connected again. I want to, I want to see yeah. if that light bulb turns on for me. Yeah. Why do, why are they having an amazing life now? Because they went through this process. Yeah. I want to see if I could get there. Yeah. And think about that. Your own story. I was, as you were saying that, you know, you, 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 uh, got a, <laughs> what do you call it? When you get a b group of people together to uh, go against the treatment center rules. I mean, that's what you did, but now look at you today. Yes. You're, you're an ex a successful man. That's been sober for many, many, many years, decades. Yeah. And, and I got kicked out of sober living right after that. I went from there to sober living and then they kicked me out there. Yeah. I was like, you know, cause I was running, you know, like you said, a racket, a racket in my disease. You know, I wanted that high from the dopamine of doing things against the rules. Yeah. And, you know, I wasn't playing by the rules. So they did what they're supposed to do and kicked me out. Right. But if people got to see that, and then say, okay, I'm not going to go that far. I'm going to stay in because I want that light bulb to turn on. Yeah. I want to see yeah. the miracle happen. Yeah. If we can just get them to sit for five more minutes. Yep. You know, like I like one of my favorite sayings from uh, AA is don't leave before the miracle happens. Oh, me too. So many people leave treatment before yeah. the miracle happens. Yep. Before that light switch turns on. Yep. Hey, man. Great to see you guys. Yeah, you too. This yeah. was. Oh yeah, four scholarships. Oh, we're giving away four scholarships four. a month. Four, four scholarships a month. Yeah, no way. That's one point yeah. five million a year in scholarships oh, yes. from the Infinity Shit. Group. No that's way. including Ken Seeley Communities. Yeah, that's one's amazing. going there. And we're gonna yeah. put one over there. Yeah. Oh, that's so document good to hear. it. Document it. Let yeah. Them, you know, let them uh, get the help that they need. Am I bringing the ones from the show here? Oh, show. Sure. I have two that I'm doing. Are I don't you? know where they're taking them. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to call a. Mira. Well, let's ask her. Yeah. We're bringing them here. Cause could you great. push that? I could ask her. Yeah. yeah ask her. Ask and her. I've been asking her if we can focus on a veteran. Oh and yeah. Get a veteran off the street and really bring that to attention that too. That would be great. I could put, I could put a veteran at like pillars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I could put vet veteran at Ken Seeley yeah. community. You're a veteran. Oblong. Yeah. Yeah. We'd you're, love yeah, to do that. You're a veteran. Yeah. And I had mentioned to the direct, to that lady from uh, Annie when she calls like three times, I keep pushing veterans. I can't put veterans at hope by the sea or serene. Yeah. Yeah. As a scholarship, because I'm contracted. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but the other ones, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. So let's call her and see what she says. Yeah. Because yeah, definitely. I'm going out, and I, I don't know if I'm doing two or three people getting yeah. into treatment. That's cool. Nice. I I think that they sh it, ask her at least one. Oh, to, to why like not all three? Be, huh? Why not all three? You got six spots. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. Right? Yeah. We got we Think got, big. We, we got one that's doing it <laughs> extremely well right now. Uh -huh. Um so I, I extended her stays so that she could get a few things together and um uh, you know, move on to the next phase of her life. Yeah. Um and she's doing the deal. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And that's what's They're nice about here. Young too, man. Young, young fentanyl addict. Yeah. 18 years old. Wow. Her episode will be out soon. Yeah. Yeah, he's going above and beyond here. That's what you got to explain. That's the difference. Here. It's just not a thirty-day, yeah, TV show. Yeah, you know the kid's doing well. There's another thirty. Here's another thirty. Here's yep. another thirty. Yeah. Stay healthy. Yep. Stay healthy. Well, it's ninety days with the show, but yeah, um, I'll extend this. I'll extend this. Damn, I don't, I don't want them. I want them to succeed. Yeah, like the one that you did on season two. Yeah, that just called and has a kid. Yeah, yeah. That's what Miracles. we want. Right? She's awesome too. Yeah, I'm gonna tag her in this. One. Hey, I talked about <laughs> you. <laughs> She'll like that. Yeah. Well, good man, seeing you. Yeah, good, good times, you guys. man. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. All right, guys. Oh.